Home buying. For most people, purchasing a home is going to be the largest investment they make in their entire lifetime. So this obviously needs to be planned. Um, you're going to plan to purchase your new home. There is a timeline. It starts with reviewing your credit and knowing what your credit score is. You're going to determine your affordability, how much of a home you can purchase. And we're also going to look at your mortgage options. If you are a current homeowner and you have questions about refinancing your current mortgage, there is a way to determine if it makes sense to do that. If you need help with that, talk to your bank, your credit union, or your mortgage broker. And there are tools online to help you determine if it makes sense to refinance. For most people, purchasing a home is going to be the largest investment that they make in their lifetime. In this module, we're going to review the timeline of how to buy a house. In this module, we're going to review the first time home buyers timeline. It starts with reviewing your credit. It's recommended to look at this five years before you plan on purchasing your house, looking at your available funds, maybe about three years, how much of a down payment do you need, affordability, this is definitely going to be looked at one year before your purchase. How much can you afford each month for a mortgage? Your mortgage options. You're going to definitely review this three months before your purchase and you're going to get a pre-approval. House hunting, two months before closing. I also recommend knowing which neighborhood well before that when you start the process. Then you're going to actually make the offer and close on the home. These are the topics we're going to review in this module. Reviewing your credit. This is recommended to start five years before you plan on purchasing your house. We need to make certain there's plenty of time in case there are errors on or issues on your credit report. It may take years to rebuild your credit and 740 to 760 credit score is required by most financial institutions to receive the best rate that they offer. After that, the lower your score goes, the higher your rate is gonna be on your mortgage. A 620 credit score is required for a conventional loan. So we need to make certain that you are above 620 when you go to purchase your house. Uh, conventional loan, it's gonna be purchased by Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, and they're going to require a 20% down payment this may be your best option because you don't have to pay PMI, private mortgage insurance, which may be over $200 a month to the cost of your mortgage. Um, and there's also less guidelines and regulations, so these usually are easier to get. Um, a 580 credit score is required by the FHA or VA. FHA is Federal Housing Authority. Um, that program has a 3% down payment. It does have more rigid guidelines than a conventional mortgage. VA loan stands for Veteran Affairs Loans. These are for veterans. Uh, they also have low down payment required and also lower rates than conventional loans. There is a program called the USDA loan. Uh, that's the United States Department of Agriculture. This is 100% percent financing on your mortgage um, at a competitive rate, but there are specific geographic areas that this loan uh, must be utilized in. Available funds, three years before the purchase, how much do you need for your down payment on your new home? Plan for a payment of 20% down and closing costs. This will qualify you for a conventional loan. If you have less than 20% of a down payment, private mortgage insurance or PMI will be required. I hear that this is now over $200 a month added to your mortgage. Establish a time frame for saving your down payment. Um, be realistic and your budget and your cash flow will determine how long it's going to take to hit your target goal for your down payment. Uh, closing costs will need to be paid at closing. Closing costs include escrow of 14 months of taxes, homeowners insurance, transfer tax, title insurance, appraisal, and miscellaneous fees. 
this can be over $10,000. Um, so we'll also need to calculate that. The 14 months of taxes uh, for escrow account is a major portion of the down payment. Conventional loans, conventional loans, you will need 20% down. There is no private mortgage insurance, so you'll have more borrowing power. You can spend more each month because you will not need to pay the private mortgage insurance. FHA or VA loans or USDA loans will have a lower down payment. Um, we'll see if you can qualify for those special programs with the lower down payment requirements. Research alternative loans with lower down payment requirements. Uh, this could be lender specific. You can do your own research and try to find a lender that may have a special program with a lower down payment. Um, also, please realize there are going to be additional costs between the, besides the down payment and the closing costs. Your house may need renovations, either required or desired. You may not be your perfect house and there may be something you want to do right away, such as renovate a kitchen. Um, you're also gonna need household items, including furniture and possibly appliances. So you will need money for that. And then don't forget to include your moving costs along uh, with your expenses. Um, research a moving company and see how much that's going to cost. Affordability, one year before the purchase. How much can you really afford each month to pay for your new home? You're going to review your budget and your income. It's really important to determine your ability to pay for your new home. Determine your debt to income ratio. Uh, this is your monthly debts listed on your credit report relative to your gross monthly income. Simply take your monthly debts, add your new mortgage, your taxes and your homeowner's insurance to your new monthly bills and make sure you can manage the payment. Debt to income ratio. Your debt to income ratio cannot exceed 45% if you have less than a 700 credit score. Your debt to income ratio cannot exceed 50% if you have over a 700 credit score. Once again, your credit score is very important in determining how much of a home you can afford. The ideal housing estimate is 20%, 28% or less of your gross monthly income. This ratio depends on your lifestyle and your other monthly bills. Um, if you take a lot of vacations and have expensive cars, that is going to affect how much you can spend on your housing payment. Mortgage options. Three months before the purchase, you're gonna get your mortgage pre-approval. Calculate the amount required to purchase the home that you're looking at. Uh, make sure it's in your affordable price range. Mortgage lenders have payment calculators to help determine the amount that borrowers can afford on their websites. Determine what programs you are eligible to participate. The VA, FHA, USDA are all ones we've talked about. Also lenders might have specific programs with a lower down payment or, or different credit criteria. You can do your own research for that. Ultimately, you're going to need to get a pre-approval letter. This is going to be requested by your real estate agent before they start showing you houses. They want to make sure that they're not wasting their time and they have a qualified buyer that they're showing the house. Um, this is the proof of your ability to finance your new home. You're going to lock in the rate. Uh, most lenders will do that. Uh, when they accept the offer, you're going to lock in the rate. So when you start looking, be prepared to make an offer. Um, when you lock in the rate, it's a hedge in case rates move upwards. Check with the specific lender to see what their policy is if rates go lower when you lock in the rate. Some of them might have a one-time uh, program where they will actually lower the rate and match the rate. House hunting, two months before closing. Uh, understand the current market conditions. Is it a buyer's market or is it a seller's market? Identify affordable neighborhoods in your price range. Uh, you probably have done that um, a long time ago, but 
right now you're ready to go. Uh, prices change in different neighborhoods, so this is really important two months before closing. Uh, quality school districts, if you haven't researched that, make sure you do. Uh, quality school districts are more desirable. Um, research local realtors that have listings in the geographic areas where you're looking. Um, they may know the market and help you present your offer. Uh, realtors will want you to sign an exclusive contract. Um, a buyer's realtor will handle the home buying process and work for you. They're going to be your realtor. There is no requirement to sign a contract. Um, the seller's realtor will handle the cost and the closing transaction. Uh, sellers, realtors may want to work with buyers in a seller's market that do not have representation from a current real estate agent. Um, in a seller's market, if they're listing a house, they might want to get the selling commission and the buying commission. If you have a contract with a uh, buyer's agent, uh, they might not let you come into the house. Uh, start dialogue with an insurance agent to determine your homeowner's costs and coverages. You should have a ballpark idea of that already. Uh, identify a moving company and obtain an estimate of expected moving costs to make sure you have enough funds to cover your moving costs to your new home. Make the offer. When you find the house of your dreams, be prepared to make the offer. The current market conditions will help guide your realtor with making the correct offer. In a seller's market, be prepared to actually pay more than the asking price. In a buyer's market, they may negotiate. They may negotiate all types of discounts or repairs on your behalf. Have the home inspected by a reputable home inspector. Uh, in a competitive seller's market, some people may actually waive home inspections. Uh, I have heard currently there are home inspectors that will actually go with you when you initially look at the house so you can uh, anticipate any major issues and you can make the offer on the spot. Um, and then you're going to compare your mortgage options, see who's got the best rate at the current time, choose your lender and lock in the rate for the mortgage. Definitely make sure you know what the lender does in case rates go down. Close on the home. After you found your home of your dreams and obtained the financing, you go to closing. If you have a realtor or attorney, make sure, certain they review the closing documents advance of the closing to make sure there are no unexpected issues at closing. If you can have a home inspection, inspect a home prior to closing, it is strongly recommended. Um, confirm the closing services, title insurance, homeowner's insurance, make sure that they're in place. Schedule a final walkthrough. Um, this should take place as close to closing as possible, ideally the day of or day before closing. Um, you're just going to make sure the home is in the condition as inspected that you bought. Um, should be scheduled no more than two or three days before closing. Um, as home ownership is a major component of financial wellness uh, for a family or an individual, home ownership creates a sense of stability and foundation um, and really sets your financial future on track um, and is one of the most important things in creating an overall financial wellness plan. If you have any questions or need assistance in any of the planning processes we reviewed, I am available for general guidance and questions. Uh, you may also find a good realtor or talk to a mortgage professional to help you. If you need someone in the local area, I can definitely uh, recommend you someone that will take care of you.